Right now, a bill for legalizing medical marijuana in Wisconsin is getting a hearing next week with bipartisan support. But there's a catch why supporters shouldn't get their hopes up. Also, health clinics in the area introducing a new tool to help address racial inequities in health care. And later, a story you don't want to miss. We'll introduce you to a young cheerleader showing the world the impossible can be possible. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. We're an island of prohibition surrounded by many other states. It's past time that we take this seriously. An island may be a little bit of an overreach, but Wisconsin certainly stands out among our surrounding states when it comes to medical marijuana. You can see on this map Minnesota, Illinois, and Michigan in green all allow it, while Wisconsin, Iowa, and Indiana do not. Now, Democrats have long pushed for legalization of marijuana. Now, some Republicans are on board, but the catch at the moment lawmakers are basically done until January, which makes the timing of an upcoming hearing a bit odd. Political reporter Will. Keneally explains. Will? That's right. When the bill gets a hearing next Wednesday, it will be Senator Mary Felskowski's third attempt to legalize medical marijuana in Wisconsin. I think it's time to have this conversation, and, and I'm very grateful that we're having it. Senator Mary Felskowski has twice tried to get medical marijuana on the table, but the Republican is hopeful that the third time is the charm, finally landing a public hearing set for next week. I would have loved to hold her hearing a little bit earlier, but this is what leadership agreed to. It's a compromise that she wasn't able to strike even just last year. Still, this hearing will be just informational because the 2022 session is already done. Felskowski's bill would create an oversight board to regulate medical marijuana and allow people to use it as a pill or a liquid. Democrats say that that does not go far enough. So the bill that I have um, been working on for um, five sessions now, I believe, um, is a bill that would um, fully legalize cannabis for responsible adult usage. Democratic State Senator Melissa Agard says she will keep pressing for full legalization. The people of Wisconsin, frankly, are tired of the rhetoric of politics being involved. Um, they want us to just get it done. The most recent Marquette poll shows more than 60% of the state supports full legalization of marijuana. Felskowski isn't convinced to go that far, but she's ready to do some convincing of her own. There's still Republicans that are very concerned with the drug problems that we have in the state. So this is where um, education and information comes in. Wednesday's hearing will largely be informational. The bill will have to be completely reintroduced in 2023. All right, Will, thank you. On this gusty, chilly mid-April day, let's check your certified most accurate forecast. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti on the patio. Gary. Well, the wind should stay st strong for a couple of hours, but once the sun goes down, uh, the winds will die down a little bit. They'll still remain brisk overnight, but visible cloud track shows those streams of clouds just kind of sweeping through the Midwest with those high winds, even aloft. And uh, there are some flurries. Uh, might see a, a flurry or a spring at some point this evening, mainly north of Madison, but wind advisories remain in effect for another hour for all of southern Wisconsin, for southeastern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. A high wind warning is in effect for winds that could gust to as high as 60 to 65 miles per hour. We've already seen a gust of 63 miles an hour in Kenosha here in Madison. We've been up to 43, but it seems stronger than that. And these are current wind gusts still in the 35 to 45 mile per hour range over much of southern Wisconsin. High temperatures today only made it in the lower to middle 40s. Areas north of Madison didn't get out of the 30s and right now temperatures are just below those readings uh, just cold enough for a couple of flakes of snow to come down especially north of Madison so look for a low of 31 tonight as the winds die down a little bit tomorrow will be breezy and chilly with a high of 46 or it might be a rain or snow shower chance early in the morning south of Madison and then we'll see dry weather into the Easter weekend I'll have more on the holiday weekend forecast in just a few minutes all right Gary thank you the strong winds are being blamed for starting a house fire in Beloit firefighters responded to a report of downed wires in the 17 1800 block of Hemlock Street just after 1210 p.m. While firefighters were on the scene, the home's residents evacuated and said their basement was filled with smoke. The fire caused $15,000 in damage. The DNR asking people to avoid burning through the weekend because of the wind. The warning comes just a couple days after the DNR warned that much of western and southwestern Wisconsin was under a very high fire risk. 
In the last week, nearly 60 wildfires across the state have burned some 175 acres of land. DNR also restarting efforts to set standards for bacteria in groundwater. Officials spent two and a half years developing rules setting groundwater standards for E. coli, PFAS chemicals, and other pollutants, but the board scrapped that work in February. The board's conservative majority said they were concerned about the state getting ahead of federal regulators setting PFAS standards as well as the cost of compliance. Right now, the Brewers home opener underway at American Family Field. And while there are no issues inside, outside, tailgating fans felt the impact of the strong winds. The team issued a notice on social media recommending fans leave tents and canopies at home. They're also asking people to keep an eye on those smaller grills, uh, tables, and anything else that may blow away. And right now, the game in the top of the fifth now, I'm trying to check this on my phone. Yeah, 4 nothing. Brewers still on top. Coming up later in sports, we'll have highlights of the game and opening day reaction from the fans. The Monroe Police Department says it has arrested a 29-year-old man who allegedly attacked his mother with a knife. Officers were called to a home on 24th Street just after 5.30 in the morning. Police say another one of the mother's sons intervened and the suspect fled the scene. The mother was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. The son who intervened also suffered minor injuries. According to the State Justice Department, Wisconsin crime labs took longer to deliver test results last year. The average turnaround time to develop a DNA profile jumped from three months to four, while the time to analyze evidence for the presence of an illegal drug increased from 44 to 61 days. The only areas where turnaround times improved were ballistics, tool marks, and footwear analysis. A new memorial scholarship fund announced at Madison College today will assist domestic abuse survivors. The scholarship was established in memory of Ishmael Sanchez, a well-known advocate for those who had experienced domestic violence or sexual assault in the Madison area. This scholarship addresses a very important piece of this work as finances are often a critical block to victims leaving their abusers and reclaiming their lives. Sheriff Calvin Barrett, retired Sheriff Dave Mahoney, and representatives from the Rape Crisis Center were on hand for the launch of the scholarship. Wisconsin has one of the highest disparities in the country when it comes to birth outcomes. A new initiative announced in Dane County today hopes to change that. Connect Rx helps identify non-medical needs of pregnant women, like housing, child care, and transportation, and helps steer families to available resources in the community. The goal of Connect Rx is to address racial inequities in health care, addressing low birth weights and seeking better birth outcomes for black women. The launch was led by the Dane County Health Council and the Foundation for Black Women's Wellness. The system was informed and co-created by black women and community to make pregnancy and childbirth for our mothers and our babies safer and we're thrilled to see this part of the Saving Our Babies initiative come to life after years of development. We've Access Community Health Centers, Group Health Cooperative, SSM Health, Unity Point Health Meritor, and UW Health are all using this tool. After four weeks of learning everything about horses, the Madison Police Department's Mounted Patrol Academy members are graduating tomorrow. Today, their final day of training at the Horse First Farm in Brooklyn. This is one of the department's largest graduating classes in recent history. We train the riders that they could ride any of the horses owned by the department, but we also, they cultivate and develop a partnership with one particular horse that is a little stronger. The officers learned a wide range of things at the academy, including even learning how to drive the horse trailer. In other news, Wisconsin State Representative Sandy Pope of Mount Horeb says she will not seek re-election after 20 years in the state legislature. Pope, first elected to the legislature back in 2002, has previously served as the chair and ranking Democrat in the Assembly Committee on Education. The ninth Democrat now to announce she is leaving the Assembly. 13 Republicans have also said they are retiring or simply not running again. And still ahead, a local food bank gives out financial aid in an effort to improve food equity in certain communities. Plus, students at a local high school hold a walkout, what the protest is about, and how what they're asking, what they're asking people to do to help. You're watching Madison's fastest growing newscast, News 3 Now at 6. 
Dylan, how's the cash situation with all the price increases? Honestly, not that great. Well, Slumberland can help. It's our biggest finance sales event of the year. Get this sectional for just $20 a month when you spend $1,200 and pay no interest for five years. Keep all the dust, pollen, and allergens out of your home this spring with the new Eco Sky Windows exclusively from Mad City Windows. We're Wisconsin's number one remodeler and trusted local source for a high quality windows that combine unmatched performance with distinctive style, custom made to fit any size opening. And now's the time to save during our spring blowout sale. Save $750 on a house full of new windows, interest free financing for 12 months, and a $100 target gift card with purchase. But act now and we're going to double your savings. Save $1,500 on a house full of new windows. Double your interest-free financing from 12 to 24 months and double your bonus. Receive a $200 Target gift card with the purchase of new windows. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, call 608-338-1616. Let me give you that number again. 608-338-1616. Get tickets at madison.broadway.com. Oh, I'm back. Hey, Dylan, need a mattress? Well, luckily, Slumberland has a big Sealy sale. Look what you can get for $20 a month, a Sealy Posturepedic mattress and a power base. And you'll pay no interest for five years at Slumberland Furniture. Students at Madison Memorial High School walked out of class today to protest the Enbridge Line 5 pipeline. Enbridge plans to move a 12-mile section of the pipeline in northern Wisconsin from native lands to a new area. The students say they wanted to raise awareness about the pipeline's history. In the last 50 years, they say Line 5 has leaked 29 times, spilling more than a million gallons of oil into the environment. And we just want to do whatever we can to stop Line 5 from being built. But right now, because we're students and we can't do that much, we have to like join together and make petitions and try to do anything we can. The students suggested that people contact the DNR to make comments on the pipeline's relocation. Second Harvest Food Bank announcing recipients of $200,000 in capacity building grants today. From February 1st through March 14th, Second Harvest accepted proposals for grants of up to $75,000 each. Four of those proposals ultimately were selected. The overarching goal of the initiative is to learn from and build long-term nutrition distribution strategies with racially diverse communities. We strongly believe that everyone in our community should have equitable access to food that is both nutritious and culturally meaningful. In total, there were 36 eligible proposals received with nearly $1.8 million in requested funds. A five-person selection committee determined which proposals would be funded. A young cheerleader proving that anything can be done if you work hard enough for it. When we come back, how her perseverance and determination now has her competing at the highest level. Plus, can we expect to see any spring-like weather anytime soon? Gary will have your complete forecast after the break. and Appliance Mart's Beat the Clock Easter Weekend Sale. Friday, Saturday, Monday only. Save up to 40% off clearance and special buy appliances. Plus 60 months special financing. Only at Furniture and Appliance Mart. Inside Ashley off the Beltline and East Springs Drive. From first-time homeowners to empty nesters, all homeowners want to take pride in the appearance of their home. And one way to do that is by adding new Eco Sky Windows from Mad City. And if you act now, we're going to double your savings. Save $1,500 on a house full of new windows. Double your interest-free financing from 12 to 24 months. And double your bonus. Receive a $200 Target gift card with window purchase. Check us out online, madcitywindows.com. There are so many things we take for granted. And along with them, sometimes we take the people who depend on them for granted too. How can they survive with record increases in their basic cost of living? And through no fault of their own, they're being left behind. If you or someone you know needs a hand up, 
Our energy, water, and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home. You may not ask for it, but we're here to help. At Hy-Vee, we take pride in being part of the communities we serve. In 2021, we donated more than 14 million meals, and this year, we're committed to doing even more. For over 90 years, we've been the place that people turn in time of need, and we take that very seriously. That's why we're loading our semis full of food this week and making deliveries across the Midwest to help families this Easter. To join our effort, simply donate when you're at the checkout. Together, we can make a big difference for those in need. For decades, Washington politicians have promised to lower the cost of prescription drugs. But every year, the prices go up. Why? Because Republicans like Ron Johnson, and let's be honest, too many Democrats don't have the guts to stand up to the pharmaceutical companies. I'm Sarah Godlewski, and I will. I want to bring practical solutions to Washington. That's what I've done as state treasurer. I'm Sarah Godlewski, and the big drug companies may not approve this message, but I do. Ashley's Beat the Clock Easter Weekend Mattress Sale. Friday, Saturday, Monday only. Get a Tempur-Pedic or Purple Mattress for $1 a day. Guaranteed delivery within five days on all in-stock mattresses. Do not miss it. Only at Ashley. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. In a world where many might tell her she can't, a young woman from DeForest is proving she can. A lifetime of hurdles, challenges, and perseverance is catapulting Sierra Ferris into two elite cheerleading competitions. Charlotte Deleste shows us why all of us should be cheering for her. She wants to do the best she can. It's just in her nature. She is Sierra Ferris, a cheerleader. Then where's our hands? And she is really floor, good. She probably spent more time in my old gym than a lot of our other athletes did. She wanted to practice with the kids. Sierra got a taste of cheerleading about seven years ago through a program called Sparkle Cheer at Janesville's Craig High School. Like this, remember? Which there is for go. athletes with special needs. Sierra has autism. She talked about it, watched it on TV, found it on YouTube, you know, wanted to learn more and more and get better and better. And she had never really had anything before that really, like, sparked her attention like that before. At first, Sierra couldn't even do a forward roll. Good job, one more. But through her determination and her trainer. Remember, finish up for me. Who she affectionately calls Coach Corn, she excelled. Show me those muscles. When she was starting with me, she wasn't able to push up and get her head off the ground. Now she's starting to get stronger where she can get her body up. Sierra now competes at an elite level and she has the hardware to prove it. National champion, so you're a champion? Yeah. How, what is it like to be a champion? I don't know. Oh, come on, it's gotta feel, does it feel a little Fun. good? Yeah, it felt good. Yeah. It's special, because I think, you know, her whole life, it's always kind of been worried about, like, where will she fit in? What, what will she be able to do? Because I think you hear your whole life about the limitations, but you never hear about the you know, the exceptions. And because of Sierra's drive, skill, and love for the sport, finish. she's been selected to compete in the Unified Team USA in the U.S. Cheer Finals in Orlando this month. Some tuck jumps. Then, two days after that, she'll compete in the CheerAbilities All-Star World Championship with her team, Green Bay Fusion, and they're the team to beat. Just watching where she's at now, it, it definitely can bring a tear to my eye at times because it's just to see her out there. Yeah, we do it, yeah, we do the most recent competition was a very large one and hearing thousands of people that do not know my child or any of the other children on the team, just the whole arena was in a roar, screaming for all of our kids and knowing that, you know, five years ago she couldn't even do a somersault. I'm very proud and uh, it's a lot, you know, to see her go away to another team but then she comes back. Back as a champion, just as she was born to be, showing the world the impossible can become possible. They're normal, they're just like every other kid. They might have differences, but they're just, if not more motivated than the other children, because they kind of, I think they know they have to be. Don't underestimate their ability to understand and be skilled. One more time. For News 3 Now, I'm Charlotte Deleste. 
Go Sierra Go. The Orlando competition, by the way, is set for April 23rd through the 25th. And all of us here at News 3 now wish Sierra and the rest of the team the best of luck. We'll keep you posted. Can't wait to hear how well she does. The high winds are blowing in colder temperatures through the rest of the week. Here's Gary with the forecast. Well, we have high wind advisory, uh, wind advisories for southern and central Wisconsin through 7 p.m. and high wind warnings to our south and also to the southeast. Milwaukee, Racine, and Kenosha counties under high wind warnings as well as much of Iowa and parts of western Minnesota and eastern South Dakota. These are some of the current wind gusts right now about 30 to 45 miles per hour in the southern half of the state. We're seeing wind gusts now between about 40 and 50 miles per hour through much of Iowa and northern Illinois. And these are the maximum wind gusts so far today. 55 miles per hour in Milwaukee, uh, 63 miles per hour in Kenosha, O'Hare Field in Chicago, uh, 53 miles an hour. A lot of upper 40 to middle 50 mile per hour wind gusts. Uh, enough to blow things around and cause some power lines to go down. We had a story on that earlier in the newscast. Three things you need to know in the forecast. It won't be quite as windy, but it still will be breezy for tomorrow and Saturday, and that'll keep a chill in the air. Look for high temperatures only in the 40s for the rest of this week, through the Easter weekend, and through the first half of next week. We'll have to wait until Thursday and Friday before we see temperatures in the 50s, and next weekend before we see temperatures in the 60s. And there'll be some shower chances next week, the highest chances from Sunday night into Monday, and then again late Tuesday night into Wednesday. Most of that will be in the form of rain, but there could be a little snow mixed in uh, early in the morning or late at night when temperatures are a little bit colder. Right now we're seeing a couple of flurries to our north and west. Camp Douglas did report some flurries and Lone Rock a brief little rain shower. So can't rule out an isolated flurry or a brief rain shower this evening, but these will die down pretty quickly after sunset. You can see the spotty popcorn nature of the precipitation. That means that uh, it's the unstable uh, part of the atmosphere that's causing those to happen. And when the sun goes down, the atmosphere stabilizes and those uh, showers and flurries go away. Uh, you can see the Easter weekend forecast is going to be a chilly one. Good Friday tomorrow, 46, 42 on Saturday, 45 for Easter Sunday. Mainly it'll be dry. Uh, it'll be a little breezy for tomorrow and Saturday, but there'll be some shower chances perhaps late in the day on Easter Sunday. These are current temperatures. These are not low temperatures. <laughs> 30s and 20s in the northern part of the Midwest, 50s to our south, 60s across Kansas and Missouri. That's where the sun is shining, or at least uh, shining a little more brightly. But you can see the dew point temperatures are very low. That allows those winds to mix down near the ground, but it also causes high fire danger and red flag warnings are in effect for much of the central plains into Texas and Oklahoma and parts of New Mexico. These snow showers and flurries rotating around that big area of low pressure, just kind of spinning in the northern part of the Midwest. The cold front now has raced all the way to the east. So we're getting winds out of the west and southwest, bringing in cold weather rather than out of the northwest or north like you'd expect. And these temperatures are very chilly. Only upper 20s to lower 30s uh, for the northern parts of the state and lower 40s here in southern Wisconsin. So again, wind advisory in effect through 7 p.m. for all of southern Wisconsin, except for the Milwaukee area where there are high wind warnings. Look for high tomorrow, 46. The winds will uh, still be kind of brisk, and there could be a slight chance for a rain or snow shower south of Madison. 42 for high on Saturday, 45 Easter Sunday. Rain, snow shower our chance Monday and Wednesday by the end of next week and into the following weekend temperatures at least back closer to normal. It's finally here the Brewers home opener. We have much more from outside and inside American Family Field coming up next in sports. News 3 now first warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Save more at hy V. Smoked ham portion, only $1.28 a pound. Canned corn or green beans, only 39 cents. And pineapples, only $1.99 each. Scan the QR code or check out hyvdeals.com for more deals. Enjoy fresh air, sunshine, and the view with the new Eco Sky Windows from Mad City. Featuring Sky Mirror technology, our windows provide unmatched beauty, durability, and energy savings. We have an extensive choice of grid patterns and glass styles to complement any home. Bay, bow, double hung, and slider. Now's the time to save during our spring blowout sale. Save $750 on a house full of new windows. Interest-free financing for 12 months. $100 Target gift card with purchase. But act now and double your savings. Save $1,500 on a house full of new windows. Double your interest-free financing from 12 to 24 months. Last chance in this program to call. You'll double your bonus. Receive a $200 Target gift card with purchase.
from Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, call 608-338-1616. Let me give you that number again, 608-338-1616. I got nothing to eat. Nothing. Hold on, I can do something. Turning nothing into something. Turning nothing into something. It's amazing what you can do with nothing and a little helpless. Open to Lenti and raise the jar to gelato made from scratch. Raise the jar to all five layers. Raise the jar to the best gelato you've ever tasted. To Lenti, raise the jar. Your energy, fueling your drive to deliver hope for neighbors in need. At Alliant Energy, we're creating more clean, renewable energy every single day to power what matters to you. Alliant Energy, powering beyond. Save more at High V. Smoked ham portion, only $1.28 a pound. Canned corn or green beans, only 39 cents. And pineapples, only $1.99 each. Scan the QR code or check out highvdeals.com for more deals. A Saturday tradition returns to the Capitol Square. Tomorrow, Josh will have the scoop on what's back and what's new at the Dane County Farmer's Market. Plus, we're planning the day and getting you ready for the Easter weekend. That's tomorrow morning from 4.30 to 7. It's the day that Brewers and, of course, fans have been waiting for the 2022 home opener. Now, while the crew couldn't wait to get back home, their fans were just as eager. And their return, as Zach Hanley shows us, they kicked it off, they, how they kicked off the day. Brats. That's pathetic. That was with our beer. Woo! Woo! Happy opening day. And bags. Normally, we do, like, burgers and brats for, like, Brewers games, but opening day is a little special. Jalapeno poppers. Bacon wrapped. Definitely. Can't miss opening day. My, my home team, my baseball team, favorite sport. Every single day the last 15 some years, regardless of the weather, we're always here. We got Jimmy on the fryer. So you just got done with the mac and cheese bites. Tailgate season is officially open, and this year the lots are full and the party is on. <laughs> it's the best day of the year. <laughs> but you're in a car. I am in a car, but the door is open. The food is out. We'll be tailgating very shortly. Just hoping the wind dies down. It's also nice on days like this because I stay warm. Yeah. <laughs> I go to Vegas every year and I put money on the Brewers for the World Series. I think this year we can uh, we can maybe take it all away. Go Brewers! Tailgating in Milwaukee. Go Brewers! Zach Hanley. Yeah. There's no better day. It's like Christmas. News 3 Sports. Franklin. Now heading inside, Brewers hosting the Cardinals for a four-game set, and St. Louis has owned this division rivalry as of late, winning the last four games at AmFam Field. Crew turning it around this afternoon. Andrew McCutcheon takes advantage of a runner in scoring position. Crew with the early lead. Omar Narvaez, he's going to add some insurance in the second inning with his first homer of the season. Narvaez with the hot bat today. He has an RBI double and makes it 4-0 Brewers. Game is still in action. We're going to have post-game reactions tonight at 10. The Packers adding some depth to wide receiver, signing Sammy Watkins this afternoon. The wideout is coming to Green Bay from the Ravens, where he spent the 2021 season. Up and down with some injuries last season, he had 27 catches for 300, not 394 yards. Career stats include almost 350 receptions for over 5,000 yards with 34 scores. Now before Baltimore, he also played for the Chiefs, Rams, and the Bills. All right, Jordan, thanks. And Gary, do we have any time for a final check? <laughs> Just a few flurries out there. Yeah, the wind, we need that to die down a bit. We'll be back tonight on News 3 Now at 10.